who would have thought the first Sunday in March when I came to talk to you all that we would have been going through what we went through. My mom always says it's a good thing we really can't see in the future because then we go running through the villages screaming. <laughs> and I think that's true. It's better that we got all this in small doses. It's been one heck of a summer. And as uh, Sarah said before, about one out of three people are clinically depressed. Now, what I'm going to tell you, if your medical doctor or healthcare provider tells you something different, that's fine, okay? Please go by what they said. Why weren't they telling us how to get healthy? That's what I hear from my patients. They're telling us mask, social distance, you know, wash your hands, clean your house, clean your office. All of that is good and please continue to do that because it is making a difference. But why isn't somebody saying, how can I be healthy? Especially when it comes to emotions. We as a country just doesn't seem to want to talk about sadness or anxiety or panic. Now, interesting in the last almost four years, I am seeing more people come to me for anxiety, panic, and depression and more men. Used to be the wife said, he's gonna come see you for his back. He's having anxiety attacks. Don't tell him, but please fix it. Now the men are coming in and saying, I'm having anxiety attacks. Depression, some say, is anger turned inward. Now, I've been seeing a lot of anger the past month. The first five months of this, I saw panic, anxiety, and depression, and now I'm seeing anger. I don't know if people were just holding on to the anger because they couldn't talk about it, they didn't want to talk about it, and now it's just got out of hand. Anxiety is usually the first thing that happens when we get hit with something bad, an anxiety attack. The emotions affect the body, especially the immune system, and the immune system and the body can affect the emotions. We tend to be in flight or fight or flight or freeze. We were designed to either run away from that tiger, climb that tree, freeze, hoping he doesn't see us or smell us, or uh, fight it. The last six months or the last four years or the last how many years you wanna talk about, we've had to fight, we've had to flee. This wears out hormones in the body, things like um, epinephrine, adrenaline, increases cortisol. And everybody knows what cortisol is because they show on TV how it makes your tummy fat. Yes. It does other things, it interrupts our sleep. We're just designed to only be you know, afraid or in panic mode for just a short period of time. And we know and okay, maybe there's some out there that say, no, this hasn't happened to me. Fine, good, okay, but you might know somebody it does. You'll be able to understand them better. We started with being impatient, tired, trouble sleeping, nightmares, vivid dreaming. I noticed that in my dreams, half the people wear masks and the other half don't. Now, is that indoctrination or what? That it's in our dreams. And it's interesting because the people in my dreams that are dead aren't wearing masks. I don't know what that means, but I just kind of find that interesting. Our nervous system is designed to handle this, but after a while, we just can't take anymore. The, we tend to get stuck in traumatic thoughts. All of us remember when we heard that we were on lockdown. All of us remember when we heard that we had to wear a mask if we went into a building. Those are memories that will probably last us a lifetime. So what do you do when you start having a panic attack? I'll get to depression in a minute, but what do you do when you start having a panic attack? I have something I call stop. You stop what you're doing. You take a deep breath, three or four, and a way to do that is to inhale by the count of four, hold for the count of four, exhale for a count of four, and do that three or four times if you're able to do that. It doesn't have to be real deep if you can't breathe real deep. After you do that, you wanna observe. Am I safe? Where am I? Am I okay? Is there a tiger chasing me? No. 
Hmm. Most of us were in our house or at work, but observe, is it okay? Am I cool enough? Am I warm enough? Am I freezing? Am I getting rained on? No? Okay, good. And then proceed with your day. Another thing you can do when you're having a panic or anxiety attack is recite either aloud or silently the states in alphabetical order. Go ahead and print it out because nobody remembers all of them. <laughs> print out the capitals while you're at it. Because if your anxiety or panic doesn't stop by the time you get to Wyoming, you want to start with the capitals. Now, usually I can get to Minnesota and I'm good. It works. It works because the brain can't do two things at once. And I'm not talking about multitask, that's another lesson. But the brain can only concentrate on one thing at a time. So if you start reciting things, or if a poem or a prayer, but you've got to really be into it, have it trick you. That's why the capitals and the states are a good idea. After a few minutes, your brain goes, okay, got that covered, no big deal. You might have to do it maybe 10 times a day. It doesn't matter. It does work. Another thing, when you're really upset and really angry, you can have a pity party. Yeah. You want to put a timer on five to 10 minutes. That's all you need. It's best to go in the bedroom, shut the door, go in the bathroom, shut the door, turn the shower on, get in the shower. That'll calm you down too. But start yelling and screaming. Say every nasty, mean thing you want to say. Say everything that's bothering you, everybody that's bothering you. Get it out. And at the, when the timer goes off, you're done. You get out, you dry off, and you go on. And if you have to do that a few times, go ahead. It works. Um, the vagus nerve is a big nerve that runs through the body, one of the biggest, next to the sciatic. Anyways, if you get upset, the vagus nerve gets really upset. One way to do that is sing or hum. Now, sing the song, we will overcome, we're not afraid. That is perfect. Because if you can just sing those words, you say, I am not afraid. I am overcoming this. Whatever makes you happy, you know, um, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, any song, any uh, childhood song, but sing, 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 sing. Your dogs will love it. Your cats, uh, maybe, depends on your cat, but your dogs love it. Your dogs love it when you sing. Humming, humming calms the vagus nerve down. So just hum. And chewing gum, which I don't understand that part, but chewing, I mean, it's a neurological thing, but chewing gum calms that down. Changing your closets, putting your clothes all in um, by order of color. And if you have too many beige, black, gray, and brown and white, you wanna get to the store and get some yellow, green, red, blues, okay, oranges in there. We need to look at color. When I buy housewarming gifts for somebody, they always get yellow towels. And I put a note in, if you don't like yellow, stick it in the closet. When you open the closet cabinet or cabinet door, you're gonna smile. Yellow makes us feel better. Our brain thinks we're looking at sunshine. Jan heard me say that in March and she's been doing it. It works. Looking at green helps calm anger. So if you're either having sadness and depression, you want to wear yellow if, or look at yellow, or if you're having a lot of anger and panic, you want to look at green. Uh, anything, silk flowers, fruit, doesn't matter. Color crayons, anything like that. That's what you want to do. If you need to distract yourself when you're having a panic or anxiety attack, start cleaning out cupboards and drawers. Not only is that going to get your mind off of it, it's going to open new neural pathways, N-E-U-R-A-L, pathways in the brain. That keeps your brain young and plastic. Coloring books are great. And you know you can get them at the dollar store, coloring books and crayons. It's so much fun. I'll do a picture all in yellow or picture all in green or picture all in pink, different shades. And it, fun, it calms you down, it gets your breathing more relaxed, it gets your mind off of what you're doing. Drinking water will help. Uh, massage your neck, rub around your wrist. There are 12 acupuncture points in the body, six on your wrist and six on your ankles. 
These are good to rub. It's your body, touch it. Just rub it, rub it all over. Rub up here. This is a good spot by the pineal gland. In the ear, where you put your finger in the top of the ear and it falls in that little depression, that is called Shen Men. That will give you peace of mind. One thing that doctors are gonna be very concerned about is dementia. We are social creatures. We need to be with people. So if you live with somebody, if you can, hug them. If the very least, hug yourself. Get a teddy bear. Hug a teddy bear. Nobody has to know. You can have a stuffed animal. It's okay. <laughs> hug your pets. The dogs love it. But the dementia is something they're concerned about. So if you know somebody that's elderly, very elderly, watch out for that. Make sure they're getting protein. We all need a lot of protein right now, but they need protein too. B12, make sure everybody's drinking water. Uh, six servings of protein a day. Seven servings of vegetable is ideal, and a serving is only about the size of your palm. It's easy to do. I had a salad for lunch yesterday. I don't count iceberg lettuce, but I count all the greens. Um, tomatoes, green beans. Now we're going into the cool season. We can get all the squashes. Two pieces of fruit a day is good. A lot of water. We are mostly water. People say, well, I drink enough. I have two tests in my clinic that I can have them take to show that they are dehydrated. Not exercising enough, that's gonna be, that's a big problem, especially for the very elderly. If the least you can do is get up and walk your, around your house, do that. Pick up a suit cam, do some curls, all right? I don't like going to the gym, I do go to a gym. I really missed going to the gym when it was closed and I couldn't go to the gym, so I bought a rowing machine, that helps. My chiropractor said you can't hurt your back with that. So you want to dance. Oh, dancing is so much fun. And you can do it in the privacy of your own house. Your dogs, again, are going to love it. My big dog loves to dance around with me. The little dog, she jumps up and she does this. You know, she wants to hold my hand. It's so cute. That makes me laugh. Laughter is the best medicine. You can Google jokes. You can put in what age you want or what type you want. The kid jokes are really a lot of fun. But just get jokes. Laugh. It's laugh by yourself. Kids laugh 300 times a day. Adults laugh about 17 times a day. We need to laugh. Patients were saying that they don't hear me laugh anymore. Well, wearing a mask and walking in a room and saying, have I done all six layers of cleaning before I've walked into this room for this patient? I'm a little preoccupied. So the past week, I'm trying to get everybody to giggle. You know, they have to giggle once before they leave. So you wanna definitely laugh. Uh, essential oils, very good. I'm not an expert on it, but it's easy to find out. We have them in every room now at the clinic because we're trying to hide all the chemicals that we have to use by law to keep the place sterile and clean. Well, not sterile, disinfected and clean. Sleep, very important. You need to go to sleep between 10 and midnight. After that, cortisol starts getting to, starts dumping into the body and that causes a whole chain of things. When you sleep, your body heals itself. It takes the short-term memory stuff and puts it into long-term memory. Sleep helps with uh, weight loss and maintaining weight. It helps with glucose metabolism. Some of the people that got hit hardest by COVID are diabetic and overweight, which are preventable things. So these people, definitely, if you know any of them, tell them they need to get to sleep around 10, 11 o'clock. If you have trouble sleeping, if you're waking up, it could be your blood sugar drops around two, three in the morning. So eat a protein snack about an hour before bed. That's 14 nuts or a piece of cheese, a hard boiled egg, a little piece of meat, milk if you drink it, that sort of thing. You don't want a lot, but you want a little bit. And then another reason why you might not be able to go to sleep or you're waking up is because you're not stimulating your brain enough. Now I'm not talking about TV. I haven't watched the news in nine days. I purposely chose that. After I heard that she passed away last Friday night, I was like, I'm done. I can't, I just can't deal with this anymore. Don't worry, people are telling me what's going on. My mom's really good about that. She's 90 and she's glued to that TV because she hasn't left her apartment in six and a half months, almost seven months. So somebody's gonna tell you what to do.
but I personally just couldn't handle the news anymore. So you want to um, eat some protein. Don't drink caffeine after dinner for sure, maybe after lunch for some people. Don't take a nap after four o'clock because that will interfere with the sleep. Want to make sure your mattress isn't too old. It's better to sleep in a cool room. Turn the computer off and the phone because that's, you know, keeping our brain awake. We're on alert. We're, we're like, what's happening next? You know, what, what's going on? Try to just relax about it. Trust me a little bit on this. I know you're not going to stop watching TV, most of you. I understand. But, you know, maybe calm it down, put limits on it. Watch the channels, okay? Uh, you don't have to compare them all. If you paint your bedroom yellow, that will help too. Okay. Soft music, nice books, old TV shows, comedies. I'm watching a lot of comedies. They make me laugh. My sister has Hulu. She doesn't have regular TV. She says Gilligan's Island. She says, I had no idea. She goes, you know, we're older than Mrs. Howell now. And I'm like, what? Oh my goodness. Uh, sunshine. That's where the yellow comes in because it tricks your brain. You want to get outside twice a day, before 10 o'clock and after 4 o'clock. The pineal gland, which is up here, which tells you when to go to sleep and when to wake up, needs the sun. We don't get a lot of vitamin D from the sun. You need a lot of vitamin D right now. There's enough studies showing it. I've been saying it for years. We need 10,000 drops a day. Now, that's what I tell my patients. You do what your doctor says, but you need vitamin D. People that have COVID, they are finding out are low in vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, and vitamin C. There's a common denominator there. We have to take responsibility. We don't know what's gonna happen. So we need to get healthier. Changing the diet, exercise, drinking water, taking vitamin D, C, magnesium, and zinc. But you wanna take all the vitamins. Nature made the vitamins work hand in hand. Um, I want to make sure I get everything in. I could talk for eight hours. Okay. Laughter is the best medicine. Da, 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 da. Laughter lowers blood pressure. It builds up the immune system. It relaxes muscles. It helps with pain. It increases brain function. And it makes your face look better. You use less muscles to, when you smile. There's a study done in Japan that said people with heart disease and strokes rarely laughed. Now, if that's not gonna get you laughing, oh my goodness. Um, I don't mean that they don't laugh. I meant you wanna laugh so that you don't have heart disease and strokes. Laughter has no side effects that are negative. And it's free, it's free. And it's good for your animals. Another thing that's important is gratitude being grateful, giving, give to Mosaic, give to the, the school kids, give to the neighborhood center. There's a lot of places we can give to right now. We know unemployment is bad. We, know, we all know people that are unemployed. So you wanna give. I was so glad when all the centers opened because people were cleaning out closets like crazy and they had all these places to take things to. My sister who made a bunch of masks for us said that in a year, they're gonna be thousands and thousands and thousands of masks at, at Goodwill, because mm -hmm. we won't need them. We're gonna be healthy again. We are, nothing lasts. That was the beginning of your bulletin. This seems pretty dark right now, but nothing lasts. Everything changes. And we just need to hang on to that. You know, um, my mom remembers the depression and the wars. And they changed, things got better. It's just a cycle, but we need to have better health. You know, the coronavirus has been around for 20 years. This was the first time it hit us bad. Now we all have our ideas and there's conspiracy thing, theories out there and there's knowledge and scientific proof, but I don't care about that. What I'm telling you is take responsibility and get healthy. Watch what you eat, sleep exercise, drink water, keep a good mental attitude. Be grateful. Be grateful for what you have. When you're at your lowest and you have to do the stop, to stop what you're doing, take a breath, observe, and then proceed, 
say, I'm okay. If that's the least you can say, that's a lot. I'm good. I have a roof over me. I'm so grateful. There is somebody I can call and I'm so grateful. I have a little bit I can share with somebody and I'm so grateful. I can pet my cat. I can hug my dog. I can kiss my bird, my parrot. I saw that. That was so beautiful. He kept giving Wilfred kisses. You know, I can go outside and there's sun or there's rain. I look at the rain with as love drops, not just raindrops. We have to do this. We have to take care of ourselves. We don't have to be depressed. We can be concerned. We can get a little annoyed, but we can get out of that. We can be a little anxious, but we can get out of that. The choice is ours. You know, pray and meditate or however you want to call it to whoever you want to call it. Just do it. Do something positive. Do something loving. Say every day, I love and say your name. I said that in March. I hope somebody remembered that. I love Rusty. Say that. Love yourself, you know, because we come into this world with ourselves, and we'll be the last person that we'll be with. So you want to love, you want to give, you want to be grateful, you want to eat, sleep, move, smile, laugh, hug somebody or something, and just know that this is a blip in time. We remember moments. We don't remember the years, but we do remember the moments. So make happy moments. And know I am very grateful for the opportunity to tell you all of this. I love to talk about these things. Thank you for having me.